Good morning, everyone. It's really nice to see so many smiling faces. Usually I'm, um, I'm dealing with a screaming two-year-old on Saturday morning, so it's a nice change. But um, I'm just very grateful to Dr. Joseph for inviting me. Uh, I actually had two of my godmothers, who are also my aunts, uh, suffer from breast cancer. So this is, it's actually what got me to go into the field of radiation oncology. So I'm just very glad to see uh, an opportunity to educate women because I saw their struggles and their gaps in knowledge. So hopefully we can um, use this time to explain some things about the role of radiation therapy in breast cancer patients. So we know, we've discussed what breast cancer is that it's, it's essentially the uncontrolled growth of uh, cells in your breasts. And usually the breast cancers start arising in the ducts of the breast, but sometimes about 10 to 15 percent, it's a type that arises from uh, the lobules of the breasts. So we have some understanding about things that cause breast cancer, as Dr. Joseph pointed out really well. Uh, sometimes it's due to uh, changes in your genes, uh, like the BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations, but that really only counts for, you know, 5 to 10 percent, like she said, of breast cancers. And we've also been able to figure out some of the uh, risk factors that might increase your risk for breast cancer. Like she said, the uh, prior radiation therapy to your chest if you were 30, um, a family history, your age, uh, starting your period early or stopping um, having a, uh, starting menopause late in life. So there are a number of uh, factors that contribute to breast cancer arising. So how is breast cancer treated? Well, that depends on the stage. I think that's something a lot of patients, when they see me, are concerned about. What's my stage? Where am I? And the stage is actually uh, determined by a combination of the tumor size and the lymph nodes. And the lymph, you, everyone knows when you get sick, sometimes you feel a swelling in your throat. And we have throughout our body uh, these lymph nodes that kind of uh, are markers of disease in the body. So sometimes cancer can travel to those lymph nodes and we have to determine whether or not cancer is there in order to determine your stage. So uh, we have what we call the early, early stages of breast cancer. And if you have something called DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ, you actually have a stage zero disease. Stage one disease um, is, are tumors that are two centimeters or less, and they're still uh, contained within the breast. Uh, stage two disease means that your tumor can be um, two centimeters or less, and you have two, uh, tumor in a few lymph nodes, or you can have a tumor that's two to five centimeters, but it's still within the breast. In addition, you can have stage two disease if you have um, a tumor that's uh, five centimeters or more, and there's no cancer in the lymph nodes. So there are a number of ways for you to be determined to have early stage disease. So there are also more advanced stages, and this doesn't mean that you're not going to do well at all. It just means that uh, we have to be a bit more aggressive in your treatment. You still have a chance to survive your breast cancer. So when we talk about stage three disease, uh, these are women who have you know, cancer in the lymph nodes usually, and we talk, talk about stage four disease. Those are that's when the breast cancer has left the breast and traveled to other sites, maybe the brain, the bone, the lungs, or the liver. So how the breast cancer is treated depends on what stage you're in. With early stage breast cancer, they can, uh, most times now what they do is uh, lumpectomies. They conserve the breast. Back, uh, back in the days, they had to, people just did mastectomies. They removed the whole breast. But for cosmetic reasons, uh, women definitely would prefer to keep the breast if possible. So now we frequently offer women breast conservation surgery and uh, radiation therapy. Another option is in some cases people decide that they do want the mastectomy, so that's another option. And you may also receive chemotherapy or hormone therapy. But one thing I want to point out is that 
women of color, there are studies that have actually shown that they're less likely to go for their radiation. In fact, older Hispanic women in some studies are the ones who are the most unlikely to go and get their radiation therapy. And that's probably due to a number of reasons. Women are busy, maybe they feel like they can't come in for the treatments, or perhaps affording the transportation that's involved, or maybe they just weren't told and they're not aware. But I wanna point out that radiation therapy, if you choose the breast conservation route, is really important important. It's actually been shown to decrease the risk of the cancer coming back by 50%, and it also improves your survival. So even if you have early stage disease, you're going to do well most likely. It's important that you get the full treatment rather than leave out any part. So in advanced uh, stage disease, you also have a number of options. Usually they give chemotherapy first, and then they may consider doing breast conservation surgery. Um, frequently people go on to have a mastectomy, and then they get radiation therapy, followed by hormone therapy of some sort. And again, with advanced stage disease, radiation therapy decreases the risk of the cancer coming back by even more, 70%, and it also improves your chances of surviving the breast cancer. So the point is that radiation therapy is an important part of, of cancer care, whether it's early stage or advanced stage disease. So what is radiation therapy? I have a lot of people come to me and they have different ideas about radiation therapy. Uh, I want to tell you right now, full disclosure, I'm not going to make your breast bigger and I'm not going to give you a breast lift with the radiation. I'm sorry, ladies, it's not going to happen. But a lot of people have fears. Um, seriously speaking, a lot of women have fears about the radiation because maybe they have a family member who went through radiation therapy and the individual died from the cancer or they had some side effects. So I want you to know that radiation therapy has come a long way from what it was when it first started. For radiation was first uh, used in the 1890s and it's come a long way since then. We know how to decrease the side effects that patients get, and we know how to focus the radiation more specifically to where uh, we want the radiation to go to the breast rather than uh, going to other organs that are important. So what is radiation therapy? I think everyone here probably has had a chest x-ray, so it's kind of similar to that. It's stronger x-rays or particles called electrons that are used to kill the cancer cells. And what happens is that the cancer cells are more sensitive to the radiation than your normal cells, so they selectively die off. And that's the uh, idea behind radiation therapy. So there are a number of different forms of radiation therapy. Um, this slide shows a very common form, the external beam radiation therapy. So it's given from the outside. This machine creates um, uh, high energy x-rays that are then directed to the breast. So in the past, you used to have to get 30 to 33 treatments and it took six weeks, Monday to Friday. Women are busy, they have a lot going on, and it is a high demand on your time. So fortunately, we've done a lot of studies that have shown that we can shorten that treatment down to about 15 to 20 treatments over three to four weeks. So that makes it more feasible for people hopefully to come in. And in some special cases, women can be treated with just three to five treatments. But I, I urge you to remember that these women have to be early stage, and they have to have um, estrogen receptor positivity, which is something that they test for when they look at your tumor under a microscope. So it's a select group of patients that can have just three to five treatments, um, but we have shortened the treatments down from the six weeks to three to four weeks for um, early stage patients. Another form of radiation therapy is intraoperative radiation therapy. And this treatment is usually completed in one day. What they do is they choose the size of the radiation applicator at the time of surgery when they've uh, removed the cancer. They then, um, after they remove the cancer, they choose the size that will best fit um, in the lumpectomy cavity where the tumor was taken out of. And then they place it inside that cavity and deliver the radiation. So this is the, uh, the woman lying down here. And that's just her breast with the, um, the applicator inside. And 
people, this is again for a select group of patients, early stage estrogen receptor positive usually, but it's another option that might make someone's life a little easier. Another option is to give the radiation internally using something that we call brachytherapy. And they use these devices. It's either a balloon or something that looks like, I think it looks kind of like a spaceship or something. And they put it inside the breast. And over the course of five days, you're treated uh, with radiation therapy. Um, ooh. It's, it's actually, I, I, it's actually uh, not as painful in, as it looks. Uh, as it might look, um, but it's also an option for shortening the treatment for women. So we've studied this a lot, and it has also been shown to control the cancer well. So I just wanted to let you know about these options because you have busy schedules. You may not be able to come, and if you're in that select group of patients who can, you know, take these shorter treatments, that's something you can discuss with your physician. So what are some of the side effects of radiation therapy? Every treatment that you get is going to have side effects. And like I said, a lot of women have different ideas. Maybe they had someone who had a really bad experience. So I wanted to be honest with you that there are side effects, but they may not be as drastic as you think. So first of all, short term, a lot of people experience fatigue. Maybe you, you don't feel weak the first two weeks of treatment, but as time goes on, sometimes people feel like they need a nap later on in the day. But the energy levels start to come back within a month after you finish your radiation therapy. Also, people may notice that their skin gets darker and it can also peel sometimes. So you can, I just wanted to show you different examples of what I mean by skin darkening. In some individuals, it can get pretty dark, okay? But this is, out six months after treatment, you can still tell that you know this breast is a little darker, but it's not as dark as it was before because the skin will regenerate and the darkening will will reverse. And you can see also in this patient, it's as though this is her during treatment. Some people just don't really have a reaction. So I just wanted to show that it's not uniform that everyone gets their skin very dark or their skin gets very red. It varies. Also, some people experience breast tenderness and breast swelling um, during radiation. So long term, what are the side effects that can arise due to radiation therapy? One is people can have you know, a bit of a permanent tan after radiation. That's possible. And they may also notice some fine blood vessels that appear in the breast at the end, after a long time after radiation therapy is over. Some people experience a firmness of the breast and the skin may also be a little thicker. In some women, they do notice a slight change in the size of their breast. And for um, most women, it's very mild. It's not even really noticeable, but because it's you and you know what you look like, you notice it. But for most women, um, the shrinking is not uh, drastic at all. And hand and arm swelling is also something that radiation therapy can, can contribute to. Sometimes when they do the dissections um, during surgery to take out the lymph nodes, that also increases the risk of your swelling, and radiation can increase that risk further. But we have things like compression stockings and exercises to help that. And in the media of late, there's been a lot of talk about radiation therapy and its effects on the heart. And so I just wanted to show you that we have devised some ways uh, to limit the dose to the heart. When just off the, um, just at baseline, radiation therapy usually does not cause issues to the heart, you know, um, or the lungs. Women don't have serious problems with coughing, usually with radiation, or have a, you know, very high risk of having heart disease later on as a result of radiation. But we know that the lower the dose you get to your heart and your lungs, the better. So we've devised ways to decrease the uh, dose to the lungs and the heart, and that's by changing the position of the patient. So as you see here, instead of lying on her back, this woman is lying on her stomach, and so her breast hangs away from her body, so it pulls away from the lungs and the heart. And what we call this is prone positioning, P-R-O-N-E. And actually, the um, chairwoman at Cornell, Sylvia Formenti, actually was one of the pioneers of this new technique. 
And she did a lot of studies that have shown that for most patients, if you put them in the prone position, you're going to decrease the radiation to the dose to the lungs and the heart. And so this is currently being used for early stage patients because it's harder to treat the, um, the lymph nodes uh, using the prone positioning. But if you're an early stage patient, you should discuss this with your radiation therapy doctor. So I just wanted to touch on a few um, topics about radiation therapy. Again, it's not the radiation therapy that you know your grandmother may have received. We've really found ways to minimize the side effects and to give it safely. And if you want to get more information, I think this should be in your packets. There's some great websites that you can go to that talk about what questions should you ask your radiation oncologist. And finally, I just wanted to end, this is one of my favorite quotes um, from David Evans. He was an admissions officer at Harvard, and he said, in the Bible, there is no book of good intentions, but there is a book of acts. So I wanted to encourage all of you, you know, we all want to, we all intend to get better. We all want to do the best for ourselves, but really get out there, learn the information, be an advocate for yourself, ask, speak up, ask your doctor, don't be afraid to ask questions, and you know, go and get the radiation therapy. I've told you about um, ways to shorten the treatment time. So you know, be an advocate for yourself and don't skimp on your treatment. All right, thank you.